Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning and good evening to wherever in the world you are. So I'm Olivia, and I'm honored to be your host for today. I'm the head of member engagement at PATA, and it's very, very lovely to have everybody come online and join us today. Uh, today's webinar is in collaboration with TripAdvisor, who is a PATA strategic partner. Part of the PATA innovation series that we do, today's webinar is going to be focused on digital marketing for small businesses. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I can see that we have a really good group of attendees already in the room. So we're going to get started. Today, TripAdvisor is going to share with us some insights from their latest research, the economic portrait of the traveler, alongside the latest APEC travel insights. So, accompanied by tips and tricks for small businesses and the hospitality sector and destinations, TripAdvisor is going to share with us how you can grow your online reputation and hit those business goals and KPIs out of the park with free and paid TripAdvisor tools. So, before we begin, I just want to have one small housekeeping announcement, which is please, at any point of time during the presentation, do ask your questions to the presenters and the experts that we have today with us in the Q&A function, not the chat function. The chat function is for you to introduce yourself, say hello, have conversations with other webinar attendees. But if you ask your question in the chat function, it tends to get lost. So remember, if you have a question for our experts today, please use the Q&A function available down below. Um, the other thing that I want to tell you about is that TripAdvisor's presentation will be about 40 minutes long, after which we will then tackle all audience questions in a Q&A session in about 15 minutes. So that's more than enough time for us to get to all those really important questions you might have. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. And right now, I want to introduce our experts. So Julian, is, Julian Perot is the Director of Hospitality Solutions at TripAdvisor. I can see him on screen. Hi, Julian, wave. Hello, everybody. <laughs> nice to see you. Julian leads the team responsible for helping hotels and restaurants maximize their competitiveness and profitability by taking full advantage of your TripAdvisor business listing. We also have with us today Nishit Goel, the Head of Business Development at TripAdvisor. Nishit, do you want to turn on your camera and wave, say hi? Hi, Alitia. Hi, Nishit. Um, so Nishit leaves the team responsible for helping hotels maximize their revenue and profitability by leveraging full funnel marketing solutions on the TripAdvisor platform. Last but not least, we have Reshma Tarakan, Head of Customer Success South Asia for TripAdvisor. So, Reshma. Hi, everyone. Hi. In her role, Reshma is focused on driving customer engagement, engagement, retention, satisfaction by enabling properties to leverage their online reputation to maximize their presence on TripAdvisor and drive business growth. Now, if you hear a little bit of echo, that's because all three of our experts are in the same room together. Do forgive us, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great session. I can't wait for the content that TripAdvisor is going to share with us today. And right now, I'm going to stop talking and pass it over to Julian. Julian, it's all yours. Thank you very much for the introduction, Alifia. Appreciate it. We are very thrilled and excited to finally do this webinar with Pata in partnership with you. Uh, it was long in the making, um, and we'll try to do justice to this session. Uh, apologize again for the technical incident. If there is some feedback loop and echo, we we'll, we'll try to do a good job. But indeed, we are in the same room, and it requires a little bit of logistic and muting. Um, so Nishit is sharing the screen. Uh, we'll go through the agenda briefly. So today, we will first dive into a comprehensive research work we conducted at the end of 2022 that will help us understand overall traveler sentiment and spend patterns. I'll then hand over the baton to Nishit, who will dive into trends we are seeing from our own TripAdvisor data with an emphasis on APAC. Reshma will then take over and share best practices on how business listings can be optimized on TripAdvisor. And we will go a little bit tactical here to make sure that we cover the easy first steps any hospitality business should do 
to activate the basics with us on TripAdvisor. I'll then wrap it up uh, at the end uh, of the presentation with a handful of uh, key takeaways. And as Alessia shared, we're going to try to stick to maximum 40 minutes so that we have ample time to answer any question you may have. Please, you know, fill up that Q&A form and, and send us uh, whatever you can. Before I dive into the first part um, of our research work, I wanted to um, actually maybe do a quick introduction of TripAdvisor. Very briefly, uh, I understand that not everybody might be completely familiar with us. Um, so TripAdvisor was founded in 2000 in North America in the suburb of Boston with the objective to help travelers around the world be better travelers and provide, thanks to a community of travelers, the most essential travel advice. Today, we're proud to say that we're the largest global travel guidance company. We have about 8.6 million business listed on TripAdvisors across accommodations, restaurants, and things to do, experiences and tours. Um, we do that across 49 different markets in, I believe, 22 different languages. We have 460 million unique monthly visitors on our site. And over the years, we've accumulated over 1 billion reviews and opinion across travelers and diners. Our global reach and influence in the travel industry is built on trust. And that trust was built over time. We work relentlessly on being an unbiased global travel guidance platform where travelers can share firsthand experiences. Very often, the great experiences at time, the not so great, and even at time, the bad. But that's this authenticity that makes travelers come back to TripAdvisor as they plan their trips. In fact, we find that 82% of hotel bookers worldwide use TripAdvisor at some point in their decision-making process. 74% of travelers visit TripAdvisor prior to booking direct with the hotel. They use us as a sounding ball. And 80% of people say TripAdvisor make them feel more confident in their booking decision, thanks to that authenticity that we have been cultivating. According to third-party data from SimilarWeb, TripAdvisor reach in the online global travel industry is really meaningful. If you look at the last 12 months, we have almost 3 billion unique users that went on the platform. Like we are competing, obviously, with the giant of the online travel world. Now I'm hearing being in EPAC very often from customers and partners that TripAdvisor has a very strong brand in North America and in Europe in particular, and that's leading the traffic. And the reality is that it is true. We have a very strong brand recognition in this part of the world. But in EPAC, we are still meaningful. According to similar web, still third-party data, TripAdvisor, you know, compete really well with all the giants uh, of the industry in Southeast Asia and in NZ. And as you can see in India, we come second behind Make My Trip. And in North Asia, which here only include Japan and Hong Kong, we should have a footnote on that. Uh, we come behind Jalan and, and Rakuten Travel. So we are very relevant. Um, TripAdvisor is a global company with a global reach and influence. But let's now deep dive into the research work that we want to talk to you about. At the end of last year, despite the post-pandemic recovery being well underway in all parts of the world, we were also and still are in a rather gloomy global economic context. The war in Ukraine, the inflation spike in most countries, difficulties to staff certain core industries such as FMB, hospitality, and most recently, an increase in mass layoff, right? in particular in the tech industry, made us really wonder what 2023 has for us when it comes to travel. So we therefore decided to work with Qualtrics on a research project to better understand traveler sentiment and interest for 2023. This research involved about 5,000 participants in six countries, four of which are in EPAC. So it's, this research is very relevant to our region in particular. And we targeted age groups between 18 to 75 year old. The full report is available on our website and we'll share the link. Uh, there's a lot of insight, a lot of data and an opportunity to drill in at country level, which we will not do uh, right now. 
but we, we, we have selected a few nuggets that will tell a compelling story for the industry that we love. At a high level, the results of that research were very conclusive and optimistic for 2023. First and foremost, we learned through that research that an overwhelming majority of 93% of all our respondents plan to travel over the next 12 months. On the opposite side of the spectrum, only 7% do not intend to travel over the next 12 months. Of all the travel intent, it is not surprising to see that 86% of respondents intend to travel for leisure. Now, what is also exciting is that 27% of respondents, like almost one in four, right, more than one in four, are now looking to travel for business. So we were wondering during the days of COVID and lockdown and work from home, whether business travel would ever come back. While we'll not be back to pre-pandemic standard just yet, we can clearly see here that people really believe that traveling for business and reconnecting with partners, customers, and colleagues is critical. So we understand that travel intent is high. Let's now unpack the specifics of this travel intent. First of all, a very exciting find is that more people are planning to take more trips this year compared to last year. 55% of respondents who are planning three or more trips in the next 12 months versus 45 in the last 12 months. That's a 10 percentage point increase that corresponds to 25% growth on that segment of respondents. If we go on the far right, right, almost one in five respondents plan to take at least five trips. This segment is up 38% year on year. In addition to taking more trips, we also find that respondents plan to travel for longer. Compared to pre-pandemic 2019, plus three percentage points of travelers intend to take trips that are one week long, plus two percentage points intend to take trips that are one to two weeks long, and another plus two percentage points intend to take trips that are more than two weeks long. We can see at the top of the chart the opposite effect when it comes to short trips. In 2019, more travelers were taking trips shorter than one week. So in the end, more trips intended, compounded with longer trips, is really a good news for the industry. When asked respondent about the purpose of their trips, we found that 36% want to relax and rejuvenate. 35% want to make memories. 30% want to get away from the everyday routine. 28% reconnect with friends and family. All feel very essential to me and I'm sure to all of you. It has been a very stressful few years with a lot of restrictions and travelers want to do what they love. They want to indulge. They want to take care of themselves. They want to take care of their loved ones. Another call out here is that across all those four segments of, of purpose, if I could say, there are opportunities for all types of accommodations and in all types of locations and geographies. Whether you are a beach resort, a city hotel, a countryside BNB, you probably meet at least one need of a large segment of travelers composed of millions of travelers. So we now know our respondents intend to travel more over the next 12 months, but placed in front of real economic pressures, what would they really do? Well, we found that travel is a non-negotiable expense. First, we wanted to understand how our respondents were allocating their budget between mandatory spending and discretionary spending. Mandatory spending is adjustable is unadjustable and needed. Here we're talking mortgage, we're talking rent, we're talking utility bills, basic groceries, food. Uh, we're talking about the gas for the car. That represents 61% of the total spend of our respondent. Discretionary spending includes things like hobbies, dining out, home improvement expenses, and travel. And that represents 39% of the budget of our respondent. When digging into the discretionary budget, we found that leisure travel at the bottom of the bar chart here represent almost 20% of the discretionary budget. And it is the largest budget, right? the largest segment, equal to the budget dedicated to FMB outside of travel. So traveling and indulging ourselves is very much top of mind 
for people uh, as part of the discretionary budget. Now back to the economic pressure and the inflation um, that we are all feeling, we wanted to understand what was the respondent sentiments and how it might affect discretionary spend. The first find is that only 3% are not concerned at all. And so that means that 97% of respondents have a degree of concern. And in fact, 60% of respondents are extremely or very concerned. Interestingly, we found through that survey or through that research that the degree of concern was also rising with age. So only 18% of the 18, 24 year old feels extremely concerned versus 29% for the 55 plus year old. But all in all, the concern is real. And so inflation is real, the concern is real. Should we expect some change in consumer span and consumer behavior? Most likely, but when it comes to travel, we found that most respondents, in fact, intend to travel to spend more. 46% intend to spend more in the next 12 months rather than the last 12 months. 31% intend to spend about the same, and only one in five intend to spend less and are a little bit more cautious. In fact, if necessary, we found that 95% of respondents would rather scale back other purchases to save for their holidays. So we know our respondents want to take more trips for longer, and that they would rather cut back budget on other discretionary spend, not to compromise travel. So let's look at what they spend on when they travel. Nearly half of the budget goes into uh, lodging, accommodation, 27%, and transport, the basic of travel. FMB is also 22%, so it is a dominant part of the budget. 15% goes into shopping, and 14% goes into entertainment and activities and, and tours. For those familiar with TripAdvisor, as a user, you might have used us to plan your trip, I hope you did, uh, you will realize that we play a critical role here in the end-to-end -end trip and across all those segments. On TripAdvisor, you can look at flights, you can research and book accommodation. You can look at places where to eat, depending on your preferences. Um, you can check on things to do and, and plan all your activities. The one caveat is around shopping. We are not a shopping marketplace. You cannot buy memories um, or souvenirs. Uh, you cannot buy clothes on TripAdvisor, at least not yet, uh, and not in the foreseeable future. Um, but we do play a part in shopping through the reviews, the location details, and the nearby attraction you know, feedback that we provide on, on the platform. Travelers are ready to spend. And in fact, many think that travel is a treat worthy of a splurge. One in five respondents are prepared to spend over 400 US dollars per night on accommodation. One in four are prepared to spend over $1,000 on airfare over $150 per person on a dining experience, and over $200 per person on activities and entertainment. So all of us, we plan and we save all year round to treat, to treat ourselves when traveling. Finally, we wanted to understand how respondents plan, research, and book their accommodation. And not surprisingly, we received a wide range of answers. Nonetheless, two large trends stand out. First, 50% of respondents are likely to book through a third-party website, such as an online travel agent or trip advisor. Second, almost 30% intend to book directly with the accommodation. So it could be that they're part of a loyalty program and they're regular of a specific hotel, um, or it could be that most likely they do their research online and then they decide to book directly with the hotel. Often because they believe they can get the best available rate directly or uh, because they prefer and want to avoid uh, having a third party involved for peace of mind. Now, 14% also plan to book their trip or book their accommodation through trip planning services and 5% do not plan to book accommodation, most likely because they prefer to stay at relatives, at friends, or maybe they've got you know, uh, another accommodation and a holiday house. These conclude the first part of our presentation. 
I hope you find it insightful and that it correlates nicely with what you're experiencing on the field. I'll now hand over to Nishit, who will share some very exciting travel trends in APAC. Thank you, Julian, for those interesting insights. Uh, we'll move forward in the presentation, and we've seen so far that consumers across the world uh, are now willing to prioritize travel. Uh, let's go through some key travel insights across, across Asia Pacific. Uh, I would like to spend the next few minutes talking about traveler trends, destination trends, and con consumer behavior as we are seeing it here at TripAdvisor. So let's start with the traveler and look at uh, the key demand trends of source markets for 2023 year to date. Now we all know that there has been a significant improvement or increase in uh, in travel intent globally year to date versus last year. This is on the back of supply related tailwinds such as new countries opening up their borders. We know Japan and China were the latest to open up in Asia Pacific, as well as demand related tailwinds uh, such as increased appetite to spend on leisure. The first graph on the left shows that the overall global hotel clicks are up 16% versus the same time last year. So these are hotel clicks on TripAdvisor, and this has improved, increased 16% for the same period. And on the right side, you see that travelers in Asia Pacific continue to lead the surge. There's been a 54% increase year to date in travel intent from APAC travelers. March, just the month of March has seen us rise of 15% versus the month of February. So month on month improvement of 15%. So more and more people in APAC uh, are now willing to travel uh, all over the world and are looking for hotels. All these data trends signify that now is the time for the hotel fraternity to capture this travel demand. We dissected these trends further and we split APAC into four major regions, uh, India, Southeast Asia, North Asia, and ANZ or Australia, New Zealand. And we learned that the strong APAC demand growth that I just talked about is led by travelers from Southeast Asia, uh, the dark orange line on this line graph. The demand from Southeast Asia has nearly doubled year to date versus last year, as you can see by the sharp upward slope of the orange line through 2022 and early 2023. The blue line, which is travel originating from India, continues steady growth. Uh, as we know, India saw some strong domestic tourism pick up last year, and the domestic tourism has uh, sustained in 2023. ANZ and North Asia see strong double-digit growth year to date. With Japan and China opening up their borders recently, the travel outlook in North Asia looks bright. As we notice towards the right, extreme right of the graph, we notice that March has seen an increase, a strong increase versus last year March across all regions at 54% year on year. We just saw that travel demand is where travel demand is coming from, right? Now let's look at what are the destinations that these millions of travel shoppers are looking to book their accommodations and also when they plan to travel. So now we move from the consumer side to the supply side. First, let's look at the domestic and international split. While we know that domestic tourism led the post-pandemic travel recovery in 2022, this year specifically has seen international travel grow much faster than domestic across the globe. This has led to a share of international travel match and equal the pre-pandemic share of international travel. So the green area in the graph, March 2019 pre-pandemic and March 23 today has bounced back. It's at 46% contributing to the overall uh, travel demand. Travelers now feel more confident and comfortable traveling across borders. And as Julian shared earlier, one in four travelers in 2023 are willing to spend more than 1,000 US dollars on airfare. That's where the international travel comes into play. It's also worthwhile to note here that a large chunk of these international travelers are looking for hotels in Asia Pacific, and hence now is the right time to target them. Why global travelers definitely intend to travel international? How does this look for travel originating from APAC? When we went deeper into the data, we looked at travelers from APAC. We learned that the international travel recovery from uh, in APAC is stronger than the global recovery. In just a single year, the share of international travel intent has doubled compared to March last year. So on the top, the green area, 35% share of international destinations versus March 22, which was at 17, it's gained 18 percentage points. That's significant. 
The graph below shows the source countries leading these international searches. So countries such as Singapore, Hong Kong, New Zealand, Australia are leading from international share all above 50%. Having said that, we still see strong domestic play in countries such as India, Philippines, Japan, Thailand, and Indonesia, and this will continue. It's worthwhile to note here that when we say domestic demand, it also includes foreign travelers uh, looking for hotels while they are visiting a foreign country. So let's say uh, a European traveler backpacking in Thailand looking for a hotel for his next stop would also feature on the, on the domestic demand. Moving on from traveler data to destination data, and let's now look at some destination trends in APAC. The first graph on the left shows overall demand for destinations across regions grew this year. Once again, APAC as a destination has seen the strongest growth in destination searches in 2023. And as you can see on the right, the growth for APAC searches is at a whopping 57% year on year growth, same time. March alone saw a 31% increase versus last March. Now, this significant rise for destination searches in APAC is primarily driven by North American travelers who have shifted their demand from North America domestic to locations in APAC and EMEA. EMEA is European Middle East. And you can see that the demand growth for EMEA is also significant at a 20% year to date. So to summarize, not only are more and more people in APAC planning their travel, but more and more people across the globe are planning their travel to APAC. This is great news for us and tapping into this global demand should surely be part of our online strategy going forward. These are some of the top destinations searched by travelers on TripAdvisor, split by domestic travelers and international travelers. As we can see, locations in India and Thailand are quite popular amongst domestic travelers. Uh, evidently because of the geographic expense of uh, geographic expanse of these two countries uh, being very large and cities from locations in Thailand, Singapore, Korea, Hong Kong, Indonesia all feature in top international domestic uh, international domain, uh, international de uh, destinations. Uh, we also noticed that while domestic travelers are seeking urban experiences, uh, so most of the uh, cities on the left are urban cities, international travelers seek a mix of city and beach destinations. That's some consumer behavior insight that we discovered. We now shift gears from where and when travelers, where and uh, from where travelers are booking to when they book. So with COVID restrictions list lifted in most countries, we noticed that travelers now feel more confident to book much further out compared to the same time last year. More than half or 52% of travel demand during the final week of March this year was for stays for May and beyond, which is a 6.6 6 percentage point gain versus last year. Uh, so if you refer the orange bar graphs in this uh, chart, uh, more than 50%, 52% is for stays beyond May. And this indicates that we are seeing longer and longer booking windows as we step into 2023. Look at the dark green uh, bars, which is the international searches. Almost 70% of international searches are for stays beyond May when customers were booking in March, indicating quite evidently that international travelers prefer to book way in advance compared to domestic travelers. This data is critical, and I would encourage you to include this in your uh, customer targeting strategy, your revenue strategy, and marketing budgets for the year. Let's talk about the length of stays and also the consumer spending behavior in the next segment. We just discussed how travelers globally are booking further out compared to last year. Interestingly, our data shows that travelers from all regions are also taking longer trips compared to last year. Not only that, they're also spending more compared to last year. The bars in orange on this graph show the average length of stay for a traveler originating from each region. The green bars show the average booking value. In other words, how much a traveler spends per booking when they plan their travel. These graphs clearly show that international customers, that's customers from North America, from EMEA and LATAM, tend to spend more per booking and also tend to stay longer when they book hotels, reinforcing the fact that international travel travelers are more valuable. We sliced this data further 
And we did a comparison of how consumer behavior different, differs between a domestic and international traveler with respect to length of stay and average booking value. The graph on top shows that on an average, the length of stay for an international stay, which is the bars in green, are one to two days higher than the length of stays for domestic trips. The graph below shows the average spend that a traveler makes uh, when tra traveling domestic versus international. And we notice that international travelers spend at least twice more than that of domestic travelers. And in fact, in APAC, if you see the graph, uh, travelers tend to spend more than thrice on international trips than domestic trips. I'll now move to the last segment uh, in the section uh, where I will talk about how customers search on the TripAdvisor platform. Uh, this is critical because this gives you an insight into what the customer is looking for in your hotel uh, while booking their trip. Now, as you know, TripAdvisor is the world's leading travel guidance platform. And when travelers plan their bookings on TripAdvisor, they engage with multiple filters on the website. The most used and the most popular filters are in two categories the popular category and the amenities category. So in our sample set, 100% of travelers used the popular category to filter and 97% used the amenities filter. Within these categories, the top 15 filters that are used are shown on the right in the table. And the first, the top four are price, free breakfast, four bubbles and up, and pool availability. Interesting, right? Look at the amenity stop filters, right? So when customers, when travelers are looking for amenities in the hotel, the top four filters are free breakfast, pool, free Wi-Fi, and free parking. Given this, it becomes very important for you to list with TripAdvisor, not only list, but update your amenities with accurate and up-to-date data when your hotel is listed. Finally, flexibility emerged as a very important consideration when travelers plan their trips. Free cancellation, for example, has remained as the top 50, in the top 15 filters used overall for years and years. Bubble ratings are critical to travelers when planning their trips. And Reshma, who speaks next, will talk about how to maximize your online presence and visibility and also drive up your reviews and reputation online so that you can stay ahead of the curve. Over to Reshma. Thank you, Nishit. So now that you have seen data that shows that traffic is rebounding across all of our markets in APAC, which is great news for you and us, let us also look at how properties like yours can leverage their online presence on TripAdvisor and capture a share of this recovering market. Let's start by taking a look at how travelers interact on the TripAdvisor platform. What are those features that are most in, that they are most engaged with and what it is that you can do to influence this. Travelers typically engage most with the number of photos, total number of reviews, management responses in the past year, and number of reviews in the past year on the TripAdvisor platform when they're looking for their next place to stay. TripAdvisor ranking also plays an important role in the traveler's booking decision. So what are the factors that drive the TripAdvisor ranking? The ranking is based primarily on the reviews, the quantity, quality, and recency of them. So when you talk about quality, the bubble rating of your reviews matter. So the more five-star reviews and four-star rated reviews you have, the better will be your ranking. The number of reviews matter. The more reviews, the better it's going to be. And of course, the more recent your reviews, that is going to have a higher weightage than the older reviews on your platform. So that is how travelers engage with the properties on TripAdvisor. So now, how is it that you can start your journey with us and access this pool of relevant travelers? There are a host of free tools available to all of you that you can use right away to optimize your presence on TripAdvisor. The first step for a property to get on board the TripAdvisor platform would be to create a new listing. So you can go to tripadvisor.com slash getlistednew or you can search for new TripAdvisor listing on Google, and they will both bring you to this page where you can submit a request to our team to be listed. If you want access to the biggest source of qualified travel-ready audience, this 
is an essential first step. Once done, and our team confirms that your listing page is live on the platform, make sure you claim your listing. And how can we do that? You can go to tripadvisor.com slash owners and search for your property. There will be an option at the bottom of the page to help you claim your listing. Now, claiming your listing is an extremely important part because it gives you access to the management center through which you can start uploading your content that will appear live on the site. So once you log into the management center, you can start by updating your description of your property under manage listing. This is also the space where you will update amenities. Let's refer back to the data point that was shared by my colleague Nishit about amenities. It was the second most popular filter that travelers used. So make sure you update all of your amenities from the exhaustive list of options we provide. Now let's look at how you can upload and manage your photos on the TripAdvisor platform. TripAdvisor being a visual medium, it's imperative that properties get good quality, high resolution pictures that showcase your property in the best light. And also remember to update your pictures frequently. Point to note here is that we can only upload the management photos. You cannot change how they appear on the live site. That will be a randomized selection through our algorithm. Moving on, you can also respond to your reviews from your management center. This is an important step that builds trust with your travelers and puts you across as a property that cares. In fact, 77% of travelers mention they are more likely to book a property with personalized review responses. So once you update all of your basic features through the management center, this is what your page will look like on the live site. So this is an example of a property that has updated their free uh, features. And as you can see on the left-hand side, all their media input is intact on the page. And on the right-hand side, they have put in their descriptions as well as their property amenities. So now the question is, is that all you can do on TripAdvisor? And the answer to that is not by a mile. There is so much more you can do if you want to partner with TripAdvisor to drive your overall bookings, save commission costs, and monetize the traffic that is already present and growing on your page. Before we look at how you can further utilize TripAdvisor, let's start the discussion with your traveler who is at the center of it all. What do travelers want while looking for their next place of stay? As you can see on screen, the most important factor that influences a booking decision is the price point. This is because every traveler, be it you or me, is looking to get the best room at the best price. Reliable information is up next on the list of factors. Different travelers look for different things while planning their trip. And what is going to be important to them is to have this information readily available and accessible at their fingertips. The third thing that's of vital importance is the media of the property that's shown on their page. Absolutely no surprises there because people shop with their eyes and what they see is what is going to influence how they perceive your property. The final and extremely important factor that a traveler looks at before making a booking decision will be the reviews from their fellow travelers showcased on your property page. This is what is going to give them the confidence to book with you. So now, since we know the top four factors that travelers look at before deciding on a place to stay, let's delve a little bit deeper into how TripAdvisor can influence these factors through our range of solutions and help you become an accommodation of choice. Our solutions are designed to help properties create brand awareness, increase overall visibility, and build credibility by taking charge of your online reputation. All these pillars go hand in hand. If you have a very good reputation, but there is no traffic, nobody will see that. If you have great reputation and good visibility, but your branding doesn't illustrate that, nobody will know that. So these factors need to come together in tandem to help you leverage your online presence on TripAdvisor to capture the exact audience that you want to attract. 
Now let's take a quick look at the first pillar here, the branding. When we talk about branding, we talk about the content travelers see and interact with on your listing page. The content you have on your page should be engaging, informative, and relevant to your traveler, and should also be in line with the factors they deem important while making a booking decision. One of the solutions offered by TripAdvisor is a way for the property to influence all of these factors through specific features that speak to the essence of your brand. We can help you open a channel of direct communication with your traveler through the option to showcase four contact details on your page. This enables the travelers to reach out to you directly with the click of a button and aids the properties in return to generate direct bookings and commission-free revenue. Through our option to upload your special offers, we get a chance to influence the price points the customer will look at and can serve as a way to incentivize the traveler to book direct with you and save you OTA commissions in the bargain. We can also curate packages that are both meaningful and cost-effective for different category of travelers with the option to upload three unique offers at a time. We also help properties capture the attention of the traveler through the quality of the media they can upload on their page. We give you the option to choose your most appealing 30 photographs, which you can lock in on your carousel, and this enables you to tell your story through your visuals. And if you add to this the option to upload unlimited videos of your property, you can rest assured that you would have captured not just the eyes, but also the hearts of your audience. Moving on to the power of reviews, through a solution, you'll have an option to showcase the best testament to your brand by pinning a favorite review in a prime spot on your listing page. This makes sure that every single traveler who lands on your page gets to hear your story through the words of a fellow traveler. What could be more powerful than that to help your traveler decide on you as an accommodation of choice? And that is not all. Our BA subscribers have access to an entire analytics suite that helps you to access your data to optimize your presence on the platform. The analytics detail the engagement travelers have on your page, your specific data points like market position and reviews over time, competitor analysis, special offer performance, as well as a plethora of other data points, all designed to help you leverage the power of your listing in the best possible manner to make a lasting impression on them. So once we have used all of these specific features, this is how a TripAdvisor page will look. As you can see, this property has updated their contact details. They have input a direct special offer, which appears at the top of all the OTA pricing in the meta search pricing box. They have uploaded their pictures and locked it in, and they have also put in their videos. In other words, this property is completely optimized for bookings on the TripAdvisor platform. Now let's move on to our next pillar where we will focus on how properties can improve their visibility on the TripAdvisor platform to aid in enhanced occupancy and an increase in overall bookings. Properties can leverage the power of preferred placements that showcase you at the top of all search results, be it on the local pages, competitor pages, and even on the map. This helps your property gets featured in premier spots across the page, as opposed to a single spot for your organic listing. You can also target the exact audience you want to attract through enhanced targeting options based on traveler's search dates, markets, and preference of amenities. And that is not all. The best part of the solution is that the impressions or the billboard effect your property has right at the top of the page is free. You will only pay for clicks from a qualified travel-ready audience when you have inventory and if you are an exact match to the kind of property the traveler is searching for. Now, there are two options that are readily available for you to get you started on improving your brand presence through premier placements on our page right away. These two options that are available to you are SP Standard and SP Direct Bookings. With SP Standard, you will appear at the top of search results and you will be able to showcase your third-party booking rates also to influence overall bookings. With SPDB, however, 
we will suppress all OTA rates, turn the focus only to your direct booking channels, helping you with increased occupancy at zero commission costs. Over here, you can see the example of a property already leveraging the power of sponsored placement to appear on top of the search results, even above the number one ranked property with multiple placements across premier spots, generating free impressions, which enhances the property's visibility and helps to increase the property's overall occupancy. Now let's come to the final pillar of the triangle that enables you to maximize your presence on the TripAdvisor platform, your online reputation. In this increasingly digital world, online reputation is paramount to the success of any brand. And this is no different on the TripAdvisor platform too. Your online reputation matters and it's a direct reflection of the reviews, bubble rating and the content you have. So how important are reviews to a traveler? In a recent survey, 94% of travelers mention that reading a review is important while looking for a place to stay. And 77% of our respondents mentioned that they were more likely to book properties with personalized review responses. TripAdvisor has taken these sentiments into consideration while designing a powerful solution that will help you collect reviews automatically, save you time and energy through a centralized review response dashboard, and help you be on top of new reviews through instant notifications that will help you to respond to them in a timely manner. You will also have access to review insights that will help you condense the information across your reviews into actionable insights that you can strategize on with your teams. So all of the three solutions we discussed today are designed to enable you to maximize your online presence on TripAdvisor, achieve your strategic goals, and remain an accommodation of choice for the millions of travelers who put their faith in TripAdvisor. And with that, I would like to hand this back over to Julian for the key takeaways. Thank you, Reshma, for this very insightful session. Um, I'm conscious we are a little bit out of time, so I'll try to go fast, but there are important nuggets there that we want to highlight. Um, so to wrap up, first, travel remains a priority and a non-negotiable expense. 78% of travelers surveyed intend to spend more or the same this year versus last year, despite major economic headwinds. In EPAC specifically, travel intent is surging both as a source and destination region. It is important to have a full funnel marketing strategy that captures both domestic, regional, and even cross-regional audiences. In fact, we find that international travel currently fuels the travel demand growth. International travelers book in advance, stay longer, and spend more. So being clear with who your target travelers are and working with the right partners to capture the right international audience is key. Having a strong multi-channel online presence is critical. There are many ways and paths for travelers to come across your property online and to book. We don't encourage to put all your eggs in one basket, but rather work with multiple partners that often complement each other to serve you the best possible outcome. And last but not least, Travelers rely on TripAdvisor to plan their end-to-end -end trips. Make sure you fully optimize your listing with us, in particular, the free, the free features. And I'll conclude um, with a QR code here and the contact details of Nishit and Reshma, who we just met. Um, that QR code would lead you straight to a book a meeting page uh, where you can solicit a private, absolutely free of course, consultation with one of our account manager. We typically take 24 to 72 hours to contact you either by email or, or by phone directly. Uh, we will share this slide on the back of the webinar, so you will get a second chance at scanning that QR code if, if needed. Um, but we encourage you to, to reach out to us. And last but not least, we also want to make a few very useful resources available to you. As I stated at the top of the presentation, the full report of the economic portrait of the traveler is available on our uh, website for free. Download it, digest the data, dissect it, and understand even at country level what are the consumer trends. Second, last week, we released our 2023 TripAdvisor Transparency Review Report. 
It takes 15 to 20 minutes to read. I strongly encourage you to go through it. It's very light, it's very insightful. In it, we share review data and trends, but also the rigorous approach we take to make sure that reviews that are published on our site are authentic and meet our community guidelines. And last but not least, the final link is a direct access to our TripAdvisor for Business page, where you can browse and understand better now you know, how you can derive full value with, um, uh, with TripAdvisor. And I'll close the presentation and we'll start the Q&A, Alethea. Thank you, Julian. So I just want to welcome all our experts back. And we actually do have a couple of questions from the audience. So now we're going to enter our Q&A section. We have a couple of minutes uh, to tackle all the questions we've received. So let's start. Um, Julian, I think you might need to mute yourself. So one of the first questions that we got is from Julia Wati um, in the Q&A chat box. It's, can we geo-target our customers for targeted visibility? So if as a business, you're only targeting certain markets, can we geo-target those markets? Can anyone take this question? Yes, yes. let me let me take that. Yeah, you can go on. Okay, loud and clear now? Okay. Yes, can hear you. So, let me take that question. Uh, so as of now, we don't have specific geo-targeting for sponsor placement, but what you can do is target the domestic or international market as such. So within a market, you cannot target uh, specific countries, but overall, based on where you are, you can target uh, your customers based on domestic or international and that is one part of the targeting we have. We also have other targeting available to you based on customer travel search rates. Okay, uh, one more question again. So this goes to about reviews, which I think Reshma, your answer again. Um, does the seniority of the reviewers impact on the rank? So I'm not sure if they mean the seniority, like the age group that the reviewers are in. Does this impact on rank? Maybe if a business is only targeting a certain age group of uh, demographic? Yeah. No. So the uh, short answer to that question is the seniority of the reviews, it does not impact the ranking. There are certain criteria uh, around, you know, the number of reviews a person should have um, done on the TripAdvisor platform to be considered a, a, a credible source, but it's really got nothing to do with the seniority. Okay, so um, they also clarified that they're not really asking about the age of the reviewer, but the number of contribution of reviews on TripAdvisor. So if I'm a TripAdvisor user, right, I'm a traveler, and I've done like 100 TripAdvisor reviews, does that make my review more valuable than someone else who has only done one TripAdvisor review on your platform? Uh, no, actually, even if you do 100 or you do five, we give you the same importance. You are all equally important uh, to TripAdvisor and it does not impact your ranking. But like I mentioned, there is some criterion around the number of contributions you should have made for you to be considered a credible source. Okay. Thank you very much. So the questions are really flowing in, guys. <laughs> Let's try to get through them all. Um, okay, I want to answer this question by Kavin, uh, Kavindu. So he wants to know the procedure for registering in TripAdvisor as a destination management company, because for him, uh, they are handling 10 different destinations. So is there anything that TripAdvisor can do for DNCs? Yeah, uh, sure. Thanks for the question, Mr. Bandara. So there is a link, uh, TripAdvisor for Business, and we've also shared the QR code. You can follow that to book a meeting and you can register yourself as a destination management company and somebody from us, from our team will reach out to you to help you with the listing. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, if someone can share in the chat that link, that would be also really, really great for everyone to just make sure that people have that link. I will also send an email after the webinar, making sure everyone has that link, okay? Sure. Now, a very important question. So sometimes a guest who did not experience uh, stay at their property or eating at their restaurant, but they left a bad review anyway, and it will affect uh, the business's ranking. Uh, so how can we solve this problem? I think it also goes to the same question like, how can we ensure that the reviews on Trip, uh, TripAdvisor are authentic? I, I can take that. Um, it's a, 
It's a good question that we often hear from our partners, uh, whether they are hotels or, or restaurants. And those questions can get, you know, obviously emotional because it, bad reviews can impact businesses. Um, so I, I wouldn't be able to go into specific of a, a, an individual case, but in general, first of all, I would encourage you to go through the transparency report uh, I just talked about, because that will give you a perspective on how we treat reviews, how we look at them. Um, our business is built on trust and built on reviews, so it is very important for us that the reviews that make their way to our site are authentic and that they are first-hand experience. Um, every single reviews that are submitted are screened. We have a three steps approach to go through reviews. All the reviews go through a technology enabled screening process that is very advanced and that will try to identify patterns and anomalies and whether the reviews meet our um, community guidelines. You know, we have simple guidelines where you shouldn't be naming people personally. You shouldn't name. You shouldn't share personal data. You shouldn't be uh, um, share profanities. You know, we have, we have simple guidelines like that because we want obviously our our reviews to be respectful. Um, so the first step is to go through a very detailed tech-enabled screening process. When there are red flags that are posted, then it goes to a team of humans that are content moderators and are experts and that are equipped with, again, a series of tools that will run investigation on reviews. And at that stage, we're going to find that the review should be posted or not. And at times it's posted and uh, the business that may receive a bad review uh, may not be happy, may, may disagree, may think it's unfair, may think it's fake. And in that case, this is where the third step of that process is really important. It's the ability for travelers or businesses to log a case with our content integrity team. In that case, it will go back to us, to a person, to an expert that will take a second look at the review and that will assess um, uh, what has happened and whether the review is authentic or not. I just want to say a couple of things. One is that in general, thankfully, we are in the hospitality service, hospitality industry, and most of the reviews are positive. On TripAdvisor last year, we received 30 million reviews, over 30 million reviews, and the average bubble rating was 4.83 out of 5, an upward trend. That really rewards and recognizes all the great work that hoteliers and restaurateurs are doing day in, day out with their customers and with their guests. So we really appreciate that. And the traveler community feel it and share that through that rating. Now it does happen that there are bad experiences that occur. And it's always sensitive because it impacts business. You know, bad experience from a guest can be also uh, very personal. You know, everybody has different expectation of what a service should look like. Um, but if it's a first hand experience that really happened, it is the right of a traveler to obviously share it. So the advice I would give to someone who's had a bad review, if we don't agree with the review and we think it's fake, by all means, from the management center or through an email alias, contentintegrity at tripovelo.com, you can log a case that will be reviewed. In any case, if the review stick to the site because we deem it authentic, um, the best advice I can give you is to answer to that review. It is so important to respond. You may have lost one customer and one bad guest that will leave, uh, or one guest that will leave a bad review. But if you respond, if you show that you care, if you show that you listen, uh, you will earn more guests in the future. On TripAdvisor, it is also the end of the conversation when you respond. It's not the case of all platform, but you receive a bad review, you respond, the conversation ends right there. So you control the narrative and you control the messaging. That's really, really important. And then the final piece of advice, I'm not gonna go and do a sales pitch now, but uh, Reshma shared about reputation management um, solutions. We have one, but there are competitors out there. There are great solutions out there. We would definitely encourage you to explore them uh, and understand how they can help you generate more reviews, get insight, 
on what guests love and what guests maybe would like you guys to improve so that you can work on it and therefore get more reviews, positive reviews and enter the virtuous circle. So I'm, I'm not sure whether I responded fully to the question. I hope I did, um, but reviews are a sensitive topic and we're always happy to take it, you know, one-to-one -one with, with our hotel partners and our restaurant partners. No, absolutely. Thank you very much for that, like very holistic and in-depth answer. I think it was great to be able to present that and control the narrative as well. Um, we have a couple more questions. I think this one's quite important, but it is anonymous. Do you think it's required for a number one ranked property to opt in for sponsored listings? Okay, hey, uh, I can take that. So as we know, uh, whenever guests or travelers are looking to book their trips and plan their trips on TripAdvisor, they engage with multiple filters, right? So uh, there could be guests out there whose filters don't necessarily rank you at number one, where you're not going to be visible to them if they choose certain filters. There's also going to be lean periods. There are going to be times when uh, your occupancy is low despite you being number one. So the way I would look at this, if, if I was in your place, I would look at it targeting travelers when you need them most. So whether you're rank one or rank 10 or rank 100, if you need more customers in your hotel, if you need more uh, visibility for your property, you must use sponsored placements. Also, remember that there are other properties around who are trying to attract the same kind of customers. So it's always good to be competitive. It's always advisable to use the products when you need them, right? So there's no simple yes or no. It again, depends on the current situation of the hotel, of the location which you are in and how the inventory uh, capacity is looking, how demand trends are looking. Uh, feel free to reach out to us for a more detailed conversation. We can look at your property. We can look at trends uh, and give you the best advice and recommendation to go forward. Okay, so thank you very much, Nishit, for that answer. And as Nishit has said, please do reach out to the TripAdvisor team, the experts that we have here today. They are here to help you. Uh, they are here to help you and here to expand your brand on the TripAdvisor platform. And thank you very much to our speakers for the amazing content and data that you've shared today. It was really, really insightful and interesting to learn more. Um, and unfortunately, we are at the top of the hour. So that is all the time we have for questions today. So thank you very much. Uh, we are going to share our slides. I'm going to do a quick wrap up and everything. If you still have questions, please, of course, reach out to the TripAdvisor team. So that was it for Pata Innovation Series, Digital Marketing for Small Businesses, together with our TripAdvisor partner. Next up, I want to share with you a industry award that is going or has been going on since 1984. So this is the Pata Gold Awards. It is proudly sponsored by the Macau Government Tourism Office. And this is actually an industry award that um, honors and celebrates excellence in Asia Pacific travel and tourism, specifically in the categories of marketing and sustainability. So Pada Award uh, recognizes an exceptional achievement in a variety of endeavors, and it just rewards the very best that our industry has to offer. So the submission deadline is May 31st, 2023. You can pick up your phones and scan the QR code right now to learn more about the different categories that you can uh, submit, uh, submit an application to become a Pada Award winner. So that is the Pata Goal Awards. If you have any question with regards to this particular initiative, you can email goalawards at pata.org. We also have another youth webinar happening next uh, tomorrow. So it's happening tomorrow. It's going to be about enhancing the tourism experience through technology. This is led by our youth ambassador and it will feature speakers from Incheon Tourism Organization, Eralo and Quilt.ai to really talk about the latest trends and technology and how that's changing the tourist experience. This is also done in collaboration with some of our premium EDU members, such as Higher Colleges of Technology, LPU Manila, and University of Queensland. So if you want to join us for tomorrow's webinar, it's happening at the same time that this webinar happened today, register now. You can also register on our website under the webinar tab. The next stop, we have our events. I want to tell you about our events. I'm very excited about this in particular because in-person events are really the best place to meet the Pada community. So 
for Para Annual Summit and Adventure Mart 2023. This is happening May 30th to June 2nd in Pokhara, Nepal. This is our thought leadership conference with a new Adventure Mart component added. We also are going to have our annual general meeting and our board meetings for members because PATA is a membership association. So AGMs are part of the deal. Uh, we are also going to have a youth symposium happening during this event as well. So very, very happening, very exciting. Conference topics are going to cover the major trends and movements from crisis management to supporting businesses in their sustainability goals to opportunities for China and India market and social media marketing insights. So that is the Pata Annual Summit. I hope to see everyone there. Very exciting. Um, honestly, I can't wait. <laughs> then really quickly after the Pada Annual Summit, we're going to have the Pada Destination Experience Forum in March. This is happening June 21st to 23 in Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia. The best part about this event is that you get to experience the destination firsthand. And these are through the tailored destination experiences that Sarawak Tourism Board has done for us. There are three destination experiences to choose from. One is about wildlife conservation, where we get to meet orang utans. I can't wait. Orang utans, guys. Orang utans. The second is an ecotourism route, where you go through the Wind and Fairy Cave Nature, Nature Reserve, and you also have lunch at Sinia Wan Old Town. I don't think I pronounced that correctly, but you can come to the event and figure out how to pronounce it for yourself. Uh, also, Wind and Fairy Cave sound amazing, and I saw the photos. They look really, really good. So please go check it out on our website. You can scan the QR code right there. The third route for the Pada Destination Experience Forum in Mart is a gastro tourism route, so you get to eat and experience the flavors of Sarawak. So it's really great because you just come for the event, experience the destination itself. The whole event comprises of a one-day destination experience, one-day conference, tabletop one-to-one -one B2B meetings and networking sessions. Last but not least, we have the Pada Travel Mart happening October 4 to 6 in New Delhi, India. Also super cool because this event, it's a well-known event, mainstream travel products. So it's important for tour operators, tour, travel agents, OTAs, hospitality, destinations. If you want to do business at scale and with global buyers and with the India outbound market or the India travel industry service providers, this is the event to be at. So um, as TripAdvisor's data actually showed, India is a key market uh, and is a key target market for outbound business post pandemic. So please do consider joining us as a seller or as a buyer with an exhibition booth, do some B2B trade meetings here at this particular event. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have reached the end of our webinar. Uh, uh, it's been lovely and it's been an honor to be your host today. Uh, I'm Alethea, that's my email. If you have any questions about PADA, PADA membership benefits, our events, email me, I will respond. And I wanted to say thank you to our speakers. Thank you very much for being here with us today and sharing everything that you have done. Thank you so much, Alethea, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So just to wrap up, thank you very much to the PADA partners, our PADA members, PADA chapters, our sponsors, and everyone who attended today. Uh, it was a great discussion as well. We've had so many questions come in and we will send you an email with the link that TripAdvisor said at the end. Okay, goodbye everybody. Have a lovely day.